is a song about people with money. It's called Fat Cats and Black Cats. Big man with little stories get big lines and folds, and the world don't have to know. While the little man with big stories get no lines at all. If all you had had gone away. Just stay the same. Oh, fat old cats that go astray. Would you stay the same? Oh, fat cats in black cats. Dun 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 Black ties, so tight that they talk, but nothing real can make it out. Pretend it all you want. Those are my thighs, so bright they can see all the things that we could be if we try. If all you had had gone away. Cats in black hats. Dun 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 Thank you. John Curtin Hotel here in Carlton at our Curtain Call event for the end of year at Sin, and we've got Gina Rose Bruce with, uh, with us in the house. What's up? Hello, how are you going, Mario? Well, yourself? Good, good. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming down and no performing worries. tonight as well. 
Uh, let's just go straight into it. Talk about your sound. It sort of ties the line between pop, indie, country. How do you sort of find yourself in the middle of sort of the mix match of those genres trying to find an identity? Um, it is really hard and I do struggle with it, but I'm hoping the older I get, it will just kind of come naturally. Yeah. But I don't like to really say which one I am. I think everyone else can kind of make an opinion for themselves. So. Awesome, cool. <laughs> uh, you did used to be in a band called The Plains. Um, basically wrapped up a couple of years ago. What did you learn from sort of working in a creative environment with a bunch of individuals? What did that sort of teach you towards becoming a solo artist, I suppose? I think it kind of taught me being a solo artist could be a lot easier, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. a lot less personalities. But it also did teach me a lot about rhythm because I'm not really a strong rhythm guitarist, but playing the band, you have to be on yeah. time. And, you know, everyone relies on that. So yeah, I think that was the main thing that I learned from So me. you sort of got a sense of musicianship from Yeah, it, I, I think so, yeah. Yeah, because right. we did play a lot of live shows and I had never really played before before the plane, so that kind of helped too, just stagecraft and yeah. Nice, nice. Well, you do have a band with you when you play as your solo act. Sort of, uh, you could go for the whole sort of singer-songwriter, guitar and vocal mm -hmm. thing, but you choose to go as sort of that fuller sound. What really attracts you to that? I think it's just the influences I love. Like I obviously love Little Birdie and Katie Still, kind of that rock chick vibe. Yeah. And um, I, I love playing guitar, but I wouldn't say I'm very competent at it. So I always prefer guitarists with me. So cool. That's good. Yeah. Rad. You've done your fair share of busking in the past, <laughs> have you not? I did a lot in Port Ferry with the planes. All oh, right. A lot of busking, and then I also did some in Tamworth last year and the year before that. Oh. But. I prefer not to do it if I can Fair <laughs> have enough. a choice. <laughs> yeah. So a bit, of a bit of a scary experience? It's so intimidating, what? and especially because I have such a quiet voice as well. Everyone's like, what? What? Yeah. what did that teach you about playing to a crowd? It did teach me to just really, you. it doesn't matter what people think, you know? Some people are going to love you, some people are going to hate you, and it's the same really playing on a show, and I think it just taught me to just kind of sing, do my own stuff, and there will be people who will stop and listen, but sometimes it can be tough. Right. Let's talk about your one of your latest singles, Blazing Radio. Um, sort of the music you've released in the past, this was sort of like a clear sort of really well written, really crisp production and whatnot. It seemed like a lot of effort had gone into it. How long did it take from start to finish to sort of get that project done? Well, it was actually quite bizarre. We did it, we did, we wrote the song in a day and then we recorded it all the next day. Wow. So it was really quick. Two worked, days. Yeah, I worked with a guy from Way of the Eagle and he's a pro, so it was just business, 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 which right. is good. I'm not really used to working with someone so serious, but it paid off and cool. it was a great experience. Do you like that sort of environment where you sort of punch it out really quickly and sort of dwelling on something I for think, ages? Yeah, definitely. I think, what, like, why waste time? You know, let's, let's do it. And if you've got the idea in your head, just go for it. Don't worry about, oh, should we not do that? Should we do that? If it's there, just go with it. Yeah, awesome. Let's talk sort of about sort of the influence. You mentioned a few people just before. I really sort of hear un the underlying country and western influence in your music. Where, where, did, where does that come from? Is that something you grew up with? No, I think I was kind of not necessarily pushed into country, but I entered a country road. It's called Telstra Road to Tamworth back in the day. It was a country competition, and I was like, yeah, I could do that. I could do country. And, I'm, and then I kind of got through to the next round. I'm like, oh, you know, I got really into country music, and it kind of just happened that I started doing country and then it wasn't until a few years after when I played with the planes obviously it was more pop yeah. and I just I don't know I, I don't really know what kind of music I like I just go with what feels right yeah let's chat a little bit about the Telstra Road to Discovery it seems like it's a really sort of informing part of your sort of early career it obviously got you some a little bit of exposure, obviously playing to an audience and as you mentioned sort of gave you a little bit of influence as well. Yeah, it was a, that kickstart into the career that all artists need. It gave you um, contacts, like contacts is probably the biggest part of it. You just get to know everyone from Mushroom Records, Telstra, all these Afro people and that just, that helps and that goes a long way. And also, you get some money with that, which also really helped because I could record my first EP, I could do a video clip, and I don't have a lot of money, so I don't think I would have yeah. been able to do that so quickly. Yeah, yeah, sure. How do you feel about uh, being associated to a talent quest? It obviously is one of the more tasteful talent quests in Australia in the way that they treat the winner and whatnot, but how do you sort of view the whole talent 
contest sort of thing? Yeah, I'm usually quite against them. I think they're just to make reality TV, really. But this one was good because... Well, it's not televised, obviously. Well, that's why. This one yeah. appealed to me. It wasn't televised. It was all about the music. And it's a lot to do with songwriting as well. It's Now it's like you can only enter as a songwriter, which I really think is the main thing that gets you going in the yeah. career, having songs and that your own. That's awesome. Yeah. What other sort of cool things did you get to do after sort of taking out that title? I went to Nashville and that was incredible. That would have been cool. Oh, it was insane. I did songwriting sessions over there, played at the Bluebird Cafe and yeah, I think that would have been the highlight. I had never been out of Australia before it, so yeah. It's a pretty good pl first place mm -hmm. to go out of Australia. Yeah. And it was free. <laughs> Country Music yeah. Central. Awesome. Well, you are playing tonight. You've got your guitarist with you. So mm -hmm. what, what can we expect from the performance this evening? You can expect some new songs, some yeah. covers, and a bit of uh, my guitarist is a rock chick, so be quite a rocky vibe. Brad, yeah. Brad. And what have you got in store for next year? Next year I'm actually recording my new single at the moment, and I'm hoping to release it really early next year. Awesome. Regina, thank you so much for speaking to us at 1700. It's a wrap.
Yankee.